I even left reviews for my own hot sauce. This one says, I feel alive again, Sam from Kentucky. It's all completely fake though. <laughs> Hi, I'm Beryl. I'm a filmmaker turned YouTuber. On my channel, I cook dishes from all around the world along with my subscribers who submit them to me. And today, I'm gonna show you guys what's inside my fridge. I think a lot of times when people open their fridges, it is a story of the foods that they eat themselves. For me, my fridge is a story of what the world is eating and what the world cares about eating. And so the ingredients in my fridge are obviously quite representative of that. So <laughs> there's a lot of cool condiments in there. <laughs> this is Maggie Hot and Sweet. It's like a tomato chili sauce and it is so good on everything. That's it, just everything. <laughs> this came to me by way of my husband who's Indian and he introduced this to me when we first started dating and it's just a staple in our house. <sniffs> Chef's kiss, it's so good. My favorite item in my fridge right now is actually something that I honestly just discovered from a video that came out last week. It's this fish pickle. I felt a little bit apprehensive when I first bought it. I was like, oh great, I'm gonna have like a big jar of this in my refrigerator forever. No, it's so beautiful. Like the flavors are balanced. It is really good in sauces and like even to dip things in, like, ugh. The thing that I had the most is definitely hot sauces and or things to add heat to your food. So that includes pickle, Indian pickle especially. So I have all of this. I have some sambals. This is um, banana ketchup, peri peri. Dill pickle hot sauce, classic chili paste, green chili pickle, red chili pickle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That's like a lot of my fridge. <laughs> I do have a couple of ingredients that I've needed for one recipe and then I'm kind of stuck with them for lack of a better term where I just don't really know what else to do with them. Exhibit number one, cuttlefish ink. I don't know what to do with this. I made cuttlefish ink risotto from Croatia once and now I have an entire jar of cuttlefish ink. <laughs> one day I will come up with something else to do with this. Until then, it lives in my fridge. Okay, so this shrimp paste is something that I bought for a mango episode that I did where it, in the Philippines you dip raw green mango into the shrimp paste. It is a very strong flavor, so eating it just out of the jar was, um, it was an experience. <laughs> Woo! New York City is a really amazing place because you can find a grocery store for nearly every culture. So there is a Filipino market that I like called Johnny Air Market that's down on the Lower East Side. The guys who work there are super nice. <laughs> they have everything there. There's a lot of Indian grocery stores that are near my house. Up in Queens, you can find all sorts of Asian supermarkets. You can find pretty much everything you need, which makes me able to do what my show is. I have an episode coming up where the concept of it is change my mind, where I've told people foods that I don't like and I've asked them to submit recipes from their cultures that they think will change my mind about that ingredient. And so the current one is bitter gourd. Just like the name implies, it's incredibly bitter. Honestly, it's, I don't really like this. And so I have been cooking it in, from different countries around the world to try to find a iteration of it that I do like. Okay, this isn't fancy, but technically it's expensive because it came all the way from Jordan. My sister goes to Jordan for work. She runs a school there. And my favorite food from Jordan are these pickled vegetables and she brought them back for me recently. So it's pickled turnips, peppers, celery, and cucumbers. My spice drawer is insane, by the way. It's absolutely bonkers. I have real saffron in my spice drawer. This is covet, I covet this. This is the, this is the red bean paste. This is for a Japanese toast recipe that I did. It was called Ogura toast. It was good, very good. So I have uh, worm salt and I actually also have grasshoppers called chapulinas. And this was from a video of food and drink pairings around the world. This tastes really good. The worm salt is really nice. Corn grits, I actually made shrimp and grits from the Gullah Geechee tribe in the Southern United States for a episode on dishes that I wish you knew instead of just the stereotypes of 
what people think about. So I eat a lot of instant noodles on my channel. I love instant noodles and I think it's really cool how you can dress them up and make them be so many different things. And somebody sent me these instant noodles from Malaysia and the flavor is really different than the other Maggie noodles that I've had. There's a lot of different spices on this so it's got a really robust flavor packet in it. There's one ingredient that I traveled about an hour and a half to get because I could not find it but I kept getting recipes that needed it again and again and it's a plant called pandan. In essence, it's just this beautiful big leaf and I ended up finding it in this tiny, tiny little shop next to these kind of trucking depots. I have fresh rotis from my mother-in-law in India. She sent them to us and I try to use them sparingly because you know, it's a very limited amount, but I love these. Another plant that I keep in my freezer are lime leaves, and these are really common in Thai cooking and Indian cooking again. And the flavor that these lime leaves give is so, so beautiful, but they're very hard to find. So when I find them, I buy a bunch and then I keep them frozen, which is okay to do. God, it smells really good. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that's expired in here. I don't really believe in expiration dates in the same way. I just feel like it's a guideline, but like a sauce doesn't really expire unless it's full of mold. Like I just, I'm not buying it. Like, okay, this, this could be expired. This hot curry paste could be expired. This is old. Okay, okay, this is really old. <laughs> this is really old. Okay, technically this expired in 2013, but hear me out. It still smells good and there's no mold. It's just a dried paste. So like, can it really expire? I mean, maybe. Oh, I do have this in my fridge. I forgot the ever dreaded Vegemite. I have a toast series where people tell me different ways they eat toast around the world. Obviously Vegemite came up. <laughs> I used one spread of it and it's just been sitting now ever since. What else are you supposed to do with Vegemite? I thought that maybe I should clean the fridge before you guys came, and then I and then I didn't. <laughs> I just kind of feel like it is what it is. Here's my fridge, you know, with a big bowl of chilies. <laughs> I did put them in a bowl. This is one of my favorite things. It's sweet pickled garlic, and it's whole cloves, but it's really, really good, and like, I honestly can eat like five or six cloves, just like popping back like a Tic Tac. Like, this is a big clove, right? It's so good. I have this jar of tiny dried shrimp and it's just in a random jar. So the jar gives no help as to like where these are from. I don't remember what I used them in or how I used them. So if anybody who has seen any of my episodes remembers, please let me know in the comments because I have completely forgotten at this point. These are homemade pickled jalapenos. That's in the very back. But they're almost done, because we do eat them a lot. My mom made them for my husband. That's why they're called Rudget's Pickled Jalapeno. <laughs> I have a couple interesting pieces of produce in my fridge. For example, green mangoes. These are really popular in a lot of South Asian dishes. This is the pork floss. It is salty and like a dehydrated pork. It also has like a little bit of sweetness. It looks like cotton candy, almost, but it's made out of pork. The pork floss is really, really good and definitely not something to be scared of. Like, I'm in my fridge for work. Do you know what I mean? Like, my fridge exists as part of my office, and so I'm in it and I'm interacting with the foods in it all the time. I was a little bit surprised that I had something in there that expired in 2013, because that does feel pretty ancient. I honestly feel quite connected to all the foods in my fridge because I've used them and I've learned about them in such an intimate way from people that they don't exist just as foods, they exist as part of a story and as part of somebody's culture that I've been invited to learn about. Thank you guys so much for watching my fridge story and I hope that you feel inspired to try something new or maybe explore a supermarket in your area that you haven't been to. If you wanna see more of me cooking with ingredients like you've seen, you can check out my channel. It's just my name, Beryl Sharashevsky. You can even misspell it and you'll probably find me. And don't forget to subscribe to The Spruce Eats to see more videos like this.